Hello, this is Michelle Knight. This is your astrological update for the very intense, powerful and life transforming new moon in Scorpio. Why is it so intense? Because Mars, the planet of war, the planet of passion, the planet of our energy is also in Scorpio and very close to this new moon. And all of this energy is opposing Uranus, the planet of the unpredictable. So how does that work for us personally? Well, all of our shadows, all of our fears, all of our obsessions, any issues to do with joint resources, power and powerlessness, it's time to cast that out. Even if we don't want to, say you're giving or I'm giving my power away to someone or something and we're like, mm, I can't, I'm not gonna let go of that. I can't let go of it, it's too important to me. It's likely to be with this new moon in Scorpio that some issue will arise and potentially we may lose our temper, particularly if we don't normally lose our temper. We may suddenly have a revelation or information is provided to us or a secret is revealed and we, we are thrust through the tunnel of this new moon to hopefully rise like the phoenix. So it is quite confrontational. You know, going into our fears can be quite scary, but always on the other side, there is hope and there is possibility. Now Uranus, whenever Uranus is involved, brings a surprise, a genius idea, a resolution, but it's often whoa, out of the blue, so we're not expecting it. If anything unexpected happens on this new moon, jump upon it and gallop through your fears, surrender the things that are holding you back and trust in the power of the process because ultimately this new moon wants you to come into your power, it wants you to face your fears and it wants us to rise and let go of things that are shackling us. Obviously Uranus is in Taurus which is all about our stability. Are we giving away our power for the sake of stability? Is something rocking our stability and we have to come into our power to transform and change that. All of these things are going to be issues. And on the 17th, Mars is super powerful. So there is a peak of fiery energy. You might have heard, and actually, to be honest with you, you know I'm a very positive and optimistic astrologer. I have to say globally, I am a little bit worried about this one because of the kind of hidden, dark, transformational energy and with Mars involved the planet of war in Scorpio this energy globally might be you know I think there's going to be a turning point but something's going to happen and I think we all have to pray for peace justice and join together in visualizing that some of the terrible power struggles terrible sinister things that are going on in the world right now come to a peaceful resolution. Now I have good news on that account because we do have Venus, the planet of love and abundance, somewhat protecting us because Venus in Libra is in its most fabulous place. It loves being there and it wants to bring harmony, resolution and justice. So I for one, I'm gonna focus on that. Also, just when that new moon is coming about, really consciously surrender any fears, consciously surrender anything that you feel is disempowering you. And because obviously it's a new start, visualize yourself in the future, powerful, comfortable with yourself, with your shadows, with your past, with the things that maybe you found, you know, shame or, or embarrassment about in your past, things that have held you back because you're judging yourself. Scorpio, in the positive side, accept all things. They understand the nature of the unconscious, the nature of our shadows, the nature of the things that we do that we're not proud of and hopefully it brings us more into more of a sense of wholeness that we accept and forgive ourselves and we know that we are worthy of power, we are worthy to go forward with that intensity and charisma that lays within us. Anyway, it's full on. I wish you so much love, I wish you peace, and I wish you to go into the next phase, through this new moon, to the next vibrational level of your power. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon. I can't believe that this moment has come, I really can't. I feel a little bit overwhelmed, because finally I've been sent by the publisher, the tarot, 
and the book. So here is the deck. I love the box. I mean, I'm ugh, thrilled by it. It's got some of the tarot heroes on the front that are in my deck, which I'll tell you about later. It is flipped up. How fabulous is that? I love that. Yeah, baby. And then you have the little booklet here. Little nuggets of information about each card. There we go. And ah, uh, here they are. Notice the gold, the fool, the magician, the high priestess, which is so important because it is Pamela Coleman Smith. She was the illustrator of the original Rider Waite. And I have three lovers cards. One that illustrates romance, one that illustrates longevity, and one that illustrates passion. The Chariot, Strength, The Hermit, various heroes here. This is Anime Wong. So I've got this leaflet that comes with a pack. It gives you one line of straight to the point wisdom about it. But this is the book. And I'm so pleased with it because what I aim to do with this deck is to inspire your own psychic ability, but also to empower you and uplift you every day with the message of the card. Let's take a look inside. In it, we've got the meanings and readings. All my knowledge is in this book, all my love and all my heart. I talk to you about my journey and I talk to you, most importantly, about how to dive in and learn the tarot really quickly because that's the way I roll. Very easy guide. I talk to you about reversals and how to empower yourself and feel the love of the tarot. And then there's a little space where you can do your readings. And at the back, really importantly, I talked to you about all the card characters, the amazing things they did in the world to inspire us. Just to give you a taster, let's pull a card, see what we've got. Oh, that is a great card. The Nine of Cups, the Wish card. The most basic interpretation of the Nine of Cups is that you're being given a massive cosmic yes. Heads up that a wish is about to come true. It's not the size of the wish, but the manifestation that matters. It could be a long held cherished one or a teeny weeny minor one, but it's a sign that you can harness the magic of manifestation and be the alchemist in your life, turning your dreams into reality. So why stop there? What wishes are you gonna cast out to the universe next? What reality would you like to conjure? What new magic can you create? When a desire is granted, it refuels our belief that anything is possible and reaffirms our power. Now you see the results, give thanks and give another wish a fresh set of wings. So this book is my life's work. I've been doing tarot basically from when I was born. It's been a lifelong passion and you could, you're always learning when it comes to tarot and I've tried to put everything I know and, and all the magic and how you can learn quickly. I am so excited that you can pre-order them now. You can get them from Amazon. Barnes and Noble and potentially order them from your local bookshop and support your local bookshop. These carry my heart and my soul and I thank you for being on this journey. You inspired me to do it because I wanted to have a inclusive deck. So I thank you for being my inspiration.